Okay, silicon hydride and silicon dioxide are both covalent bonds, but they have different structures. Describe the force of attraction in a covalent bond. Another definition question. If you don't know it, you don't get the mark. You need to know this it's part of your syllabus. So try and remember it. Pretty simple. So the force of attraction is the shared pair of electrons uh, attracted to oppositely charged nuclei. Remember, it has to be nuclei. Why? Because we have two. We have uh, the metal and non-metal. We have. I mean, we have the two non-metals in this um, for covalent bond. Uh, sorry, uh, said, said the wrong thing there. But yeah, so we have our two non-metals and the two things. It has two nuclei. So we have to say oppositely charged nuclei. And next up, we have complete the diagram to the outer shells. A hundred electron shells in a molecule of. Silicon hydride, SiH4. Sure. So we're going to do a pair of electrons in each of the bonds. I'm going to use the dot and cross here. Ignore my um, writing. There we go. And yeah, that's what it should look like. And then it shouldn't have any non bonding electrons because we have a full outer shell. The diagram shows SiO2, yep, classical question. I'd say the diagram shows that atom is labeled oxygen, not silicon. Well, many ways you can think about this, just logical way. You can say that um, oxygen is smaller than silicon, pretty simple. But uh, the more technical way you can think of it is each uh, like atom of oxygen should form bonds to two silicon atoms. That's how silicon dioxide forms. So each should form to two silicon atoms. So she knows oxygen. You can say many ways. I'm just going to say it's smaller. Um, many ways you can think about this. Silicon hydride is a simple molecular structure. Silicon dioxide is the same structure as diamond. Explain why silicon dioxide has a much higher melting point than silicon dioxide. Silicon Hydride, refer to structure and bonding in your answer. Sure. So, um, well, you know that it has the same structure as diamond, and that is giant covalent. So, silicon SiO2 has a giant covalent structure. Strong covalent bonds need to be broken, melting. And that requires like a high lot of energy, so that's why it's one point higher. On the other hand, we didn't mention the other side, a uh, simple molecular, so um, silicon hydride simple molecular structure, weak intermolecular forces. That's an important thing to say. Simple molecular, you want to say weak intermolecular forces. And then that can be can be easily overcome. More uh, thermal energy is needed to break the covalent bonds in SiO2 than the intermolecular forces in silicon hydride. Very simple four marks, free free marks for us there. A silicon hydride reacts with oxygen to form silicon dioxide and water. Write a chemical reaction between silicon hydride and um, oxygen. Sure. So, silicon. Well, we can see from silicon dioxide, um, SiO2 is going to give Si at the charge of um, pl uh, plus 4. Plus 4 because O2 is, each O2 is 2 minus, and that's going to give us a uh, minus 4 charge. So it has to, to balance, it has to be plus 4. So that means it's going to be SiH4 because each hydrogen has the plus 1 charge, so it's going to need 4 hydrogens to make it a neutral, neutral compound. And now we're going to add that to O2. That's going to form SiO2 plus H2O, right? That's the reaction between that. It makes sense, logical, but it is not balanced. So if we want to balance it, we need to add a 2 here, and we need to add a 2 here. There we go. That is now balanced.